Hello friends, this video on tissues part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us talk about connective tissue. So what do you think would be a connective tissue? As the name suggests, connective. That means the tissue which connects something, right, <clears throat> has to be connective tissue. And we are actually partially correct. So connective tissue connects and holds the body together. So it connects the different parts of the body and holds the body together. So when you think of the connective tissue, you can think of this skeleton. If you look at this skeleton, what do you see? <clears throat> The skeleton layers along, along with the flesh and all other accessories form this human being. But the skeleton, if you look at, what is it actually doing? It actually is forming the framework of the body and it is connecting the different parts. It is connecting the fingers to the hands, the hands to the shoulders, the shoulders to the chest and to the back. So that is how you are, it is connecting the entire body. So that tissue which connects the body together is known as connective tissue. <clears throat> it is the most diverse of all animal tissue types. So among the four types of animal tissue which we are going to discuss, that is epithelial, connective, muscular and nervous. This connective tissue is the most diverse type of tissue. What do I mean by diverse? It means that this tissue ranges from fluid-like structure to extremely hard structures. For example, if I start taking examples of connective tissue, I'll start with bones, <coughs> tendons, ligaments. So these are all connective tissue. Now, when you think of a bone, do you think that bone is something fluid-like or something very uh, delicate or something? No, right? Bone is something which is rough, uh, which is tough and hard, right? So bone is a connective tissue. But on the other hand, if I start taking some examples of connective tissue like blood. So blood is a connective tissue. I know it, it must be, it might be very surprising, but that's true. Blood is also a connective tissue, but blood is a fluid. So that means the connective tissue can be as, um, fluid as blood and it can be as hard as a bone so that is why we see that it is very diverse it has got it has got a diversified range right so this connective tissue actually acts as a glue because it connects different organs now when you think of the example as bone so you can understand how bone acts as a glue. I mean, because of the bone, bones are all joined together, right? Because of these joints, actually the entire body is connected, right? So it acts as a glue, which make things stick to each other, right? And it forms the framework of the entire body. So you at least got some idea that what is connective tissue? Something like bones, uh, cartilage, ligament, you would have heard of all these words, Maybe when some you heard somebody has broken off a ligament, there is a fracture in the ligament, there is a bone fracture and they go to doctor and all. So what are these organs? These organs actually connect the different parts of the body. So now we will go on and study about each of these types of connective tissue. But before that, we will have a look at the structure of a connective tissue like how we did for epithelial tissue. For epithelial tissue also we saw the structure that it had a, a basal <coughs> side and another one was the free, free side, right? So similarly in case of connective tissue, let us see what is the, I mean how does the structure of a connective tissue look like. So before going into the structure, let us have some of the important connective tissues which are present in our body. The first one which we will talk about is blood. The most common thing, I mean, I don't really need to explain what is blood. All of you know, right? So blood is also a connective tissue. Now the question which might be haunting your mind is, why is blood a connective tissue? What is it connecting? We will talk about that, that when we start discussing about blood. Bone, <clears throat> which is a connective tissue again, because it connects different body parts. The tendons, what are tendons? Tendons are again structures which connects two bones, so they will connect bone to bone. Ligaments, so what will ligaments do? They are also similar kind of connective tissue and we are going to discuss them in detail one by one. <coughs> Cartilage, 
So cartilage again is a connective tissue which forms many framework of many different organs in the body. So these are some of the most commonly used connective tissues. I mean you would have heard these terms quite on and off and I'm sure that all of you would have heard these terms bone, tendons, ligaments and cartilage in your day to day life. Maybe you do not know much about them in detail but you would have heard about them. Right. So today you will get to know about each of these connective tissues in detail. <clears throat> so before that, let us quickly look at the structure and composition of connective tissue. How does a connective tissue look like and what is a connective tissue made up of? Cells forming the connective tissue are widely spaced. Now, if you compare it with the epithelial tissue, what happened in epithelial tissue, there we saw that the intercellular space was minimum. The cells were closely packed. Now in epithelial cells, why were the cells closely packed? They were closely packed because epithelial cells act as boundary and we want the boundary to be rigid. So there should not be any leakage in the boundary and that is why the intercellular spaces were leased. But in case of connective tissue, what do we want? We want the connective tissue to have a lot of flexibility. And that is why the cells forming the connective tissue are widely spaced, <clears throat> right? So the cells are quite widely spaced. So there is a lot of intercellular space. So that intercellular spaces are filled with dense fluid-like structure called as intercellular or extracellular matrix. Now I will explain these two terms in little detail here because many students, <clears throat> not only students, many people are confused with these terms intercellular, intracellular and extracellular. They actually don't know the difference between these three terms. So I would explicitly take out some time and explain the difference between these three terms. So what do we mean by intercellular, intracellular and extracellular? Okay, let us have a look at that. So here is intercellular. Here we have intracellular. So when I say intercellular, that means the space in between the cells. So let us suppose if these circles are representing cells, so the space between the cells is intercellular. That means this space is intercellular space, right? When I say intracellular, that means within the cells. So if these are the cells, intracellular means within a cell, within this cell. Intra always means within, inter means in between so therefore in schools also when you have different houses right you say that inter house competition that means the competition is between two different houses right when you say intra house competition that means the competition is amongst the students of the same house right so intracellular means within the same cell intercellular means between cells now what does extracellular means? Extracellular means, extra means outside. So extracellular means outside the cell. So what do you see? Extracellular and intercellular are the same thing. You understood? Intracellular means between two cells and extracellular means outside the cell. So both are actually meaning the same thing. So that is why we often say that the intercellular space is filled with a fluid which is known as intercellular matrix or extracellular matrix. So both will mean the same thing, right? So here many a times I'll be using the term extracellular matrix. So that should not create a confusion for you, fine? So with this, let us have a look at the structure of the connective tissue. So this is how the connective tissue will look like. The cells here as shown in blue, they are widely spaced. They are quite away from each other. So the purple colored thing, what you are seeing is the intercellular matrix or the extracellular matrix. So see how much open space is there between the cells. So they have huge extracellular spaces, right? Okay. So now let us see what is the extracellular matrix composed of? What does that extracellular matrix contain? It consists of a ground substance and some fibers. So what is this ground substance actually? So the ground substance is a fluid like substance which fills the space between cells and fibers. So that means the cells of the connective tissue, they are embedded in the extracellular matrix 
and this matrix is again made up of two things one is ground substance and the other one is fibers so if you look at this figure you can see that this is the extracellular matrix this extracellular matrix has these fibers you can see the fibers right this light uh, orange colored structures they are the fibers and the remaining fluid is the ground substance the ground substance has high water content so that means it is quite watery it is quite fluidy in nature what about the fibers the fibers are formed of proteins they are made up of proteins these fibers the thread like structures which you see they are the fibers so they are made up of proteins now three types of fibers are generally secreted by connective tissue what are the three types of fibers that is collagen fibers the reticular fibers and elastic fibers so these are the three types of fibers which are generally present in a connective tissue collagen fiber reticular fiber and elastic fiber so let us now have a look at the structure clearly so here i have drawn the epithelial tissue as well so this is how my epithelial tissue looks like right they are closely packed with no intercellular spaces then they have the basement membrane so this is their free surface and this is their basal surface right so this is the basement membrane the pink colored membrane so basement membrane separates it from the underlying connective tissue and this is my connective tissue where these are the cells of the connective tissue these are the cells which are called fibroblasts so fibroblasts are the name of the cells actually which is given so these are the cells of the connective tissue and this is the extracellular matrix which consists of these fibers and the ground substance now the fibers are again made up of proteins and generally there are three types of fibers and the ground substance is mostly fluidy in nature it has high water content and it fills the space between the cells and the fibers now the now the nature of this extracellular matrix varies with different types of connective tissue depending upon its function now everywhere it is not required that the extracellular matrix would be of similar kind so somewhere maybe that the ground substance is more in extracellular matrix and the fiber is very less sometimes the fiber may be more and the ground substance may be very less in extracellular matrix so how the extracellular matrix will exactly be that depends upon the function of that particular type of connective tissue right another thing is that the proportion of cells ground substance and fibers varies from one type of connective tissue to another okay so how many cells as you see that the number of cells which is present in a specific area is very less because very less number of cells are embedded in the matrix now how many cells will be present or how much in how much proportion the fibers will be present or the ground substance will be present that will also vary with different types of connective tissue now this ground substance now what is the role of the ground substance now fibers we know since it is made up of protein maybe it will help in some kind of um, synthesis because it has proteins but what will be the purpose of the ground substance the ground substance to some extent determines or maintains the shape of the tissue because the ground substance in a way forms the base of the tissue right so it is actually the space which is filled with some fluid and it is the space between the cells and the fibers to so some extent it determines the shape of the tissue right so i hope i have been able to explain you the structure of connective tissue it is in this the cells are widely spaced so lot of intercellular space so that intercellular space is filled with um, a matrix now that matrix consists of fibers which are made up of protein and the remaining space is covered by a ground substance which has high water content right so that is in short about the structure of a connective tissue so now let us look at the three types of fibers which we talked about so what are the three types of fibers the first one is collagen fiber so collagen fiber is the most common type of fibers it is flexible with high tensile strength so that's what i was telling right that because of these kind of structure of a connective tissue the connective tissue has got a flexibility and that flexibility is a very important aspect of connective tissue it is found in bones tendons dermis of skin etc so collagen fibers the flexible fibers are found in because you, the bones are all movable right so because of this flexibility then we have the reticular fibers so they are arranged in mesh like pattern so they are like full hodgepodge pattern they have high sugar content the reticular fibers 
they are found at the boundary of connective tissue nerve and muscle cells so these are some of the places where reticular fibers are present then is the elastic fibers these are thin fibers arranged in branching pattern supports to cope with stretch and distension and thus prevents tearing so we can see that collagen fibers and elastic fibers together are responsible for the flexibility of connective tissue because collagen fibers is flexible that is why it allows bending and all and elastic fibers is um, it, it helps it prevents tearing so it doesn't allow some tissue to get be, to be teared up so it allows it to stretch it allows it to undergo little deformation so this elasticity along with the flexibility gives rise to the so it gives rise to so many benefits of connective tissue so collagen fibers and elastic fibers together play a very important role in the flexibility of connective tissue so here i am not discussing about the um, chemical composition and structure of these different fibers. I just gave a small introduction to these so that you have some idea about it. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.